all these new syndromes, each of which is initially received by the establishment with the phrase, it doesn't exist. And then 10 years later, it exists, but it's only psychological. And then 10 years after that, it exists, but we don't know what to do about it. Aerotoxic syndrome is just one example of you know, the chemicals that we're all surrounded by making people ill. Doubting is very easy, and you can see this also in the, in, in the tobacco lobby that time where when people start to say, well, it causes lung cancer, etc., etc., the, the first thing is, the uh, first line of defense is doubt. Our test results came back from the lab in Canada, and TCP was found to be present on our aircraft. The levels of TCP in the air were low and consistent with findings in similar studies. We asked the Department for Transport and the Civil Aviation Authority to comment on the claims made in this film. They declined an interview, but they said, It has not been conclusively proven that cabin air exposures, either in general or following specific incidents, cause ill health in commercial aircraft crews. The Department has completed its research into cabin air. We are currently considering the Committee on Toxicity's conclusions and will respond in due course. We asked the CAA for an interview, but they also declined. The Civil Aviation Authority regulates all aspects of flying in the UK and echoed the Department for Transport's statement, adding, We will continue to work closely with the airline industry to maintain safety standards on board UK aircraft. Some aircraft manufacturers have made changes. In 2011, Boeing's 787 Dreamliner had its first commercial flight. It's the first passenger jet in 50 years to bring air into the aircraft without going through the engines. Boeing told us that. The primary reasons the 787 doesn't use an engine bleed air system are fuel savings and environmental performance, and that they don't have plans to modify existing airplanes. The Dreamliner may be a breath of fresh air for the airline industry, but skeptics will say that this is a response to the increasing number of fume events. People who believe they've been affected by toxic fumes will be turning their attention to the court, with Frank Cannon intending to start legal proceedings against some of the airlines over the death of Richard Westgate. Frank has had Richard's tissue samples analysed and believes there is enough proof to reopen an inquest into his death. As a lawyer, I gather the evidence from various people and there are tests that have been done that demonstrate that uh, organophosphate is present in the air. The airlines and the manufacturers all know that the contamination is there and um, that they have to do something about it. Until then, pilots who believe they have symptoms are having to give up the career they love. I've been off work for a few years. My memory is still pretty awful. It's like living in a bubble. You wouldn't recognise me from the person I was before. I was outgoing, adventurous, nothing fazed me. Our pilot's concern is that there are other pilots still flying with this condition. I've had two colleagues phone me and ask about symptoms. They think they've got the same. They love flying, but they don't want to lose their jobs. Mm -hmm.